live on YouTube as well. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, thank you very much for being back, and my apologies for uh, keeping you wait for uh, almost uh, a month. Uh, I was I was extremely busy uh, with a lot of work, and then I couldn't find a, a proper time for having the last lecture, essentially. Uh, although we will have a follow-up lecture just to conclude the, um, the discussion in such a way that you are at least familiar with the one uh, important concept, which was um, uh, the space and uh, indeed how the vectors or let's say scalar tensors uh, and you will see today also during the lecture and later on uh, uh, also about uh, about the forms the differential forms which they are very important in physics uh, 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 are constructed and used in in physics so uh, uh, so far we we introduced the, the concept of the scalar tensors and 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 vectors and pseudo tensors pseudo scalar and etc uh, we define in the different coordinates and uh, the last lecture was well i have a scalar uh, and uh, when we introduced the quariant and contravariant uh, formalism uh, then we say that when we have a vector and we want to take a derivative and and how the derivative can be cal calculated on different manifold and uh, we got the Christoffel notations and uh, uh, that was the expression that we could generalize it to having the divisions or gradient or or Laplacian in any uh, curvilinear space uh, and last lecture we we uh, we I think we stop in in the place that we want to do the calculation for a geodesy, and we were we weren't able to to finish this. And uh, the, today's lecture will be about uh, the geodesies, and later on will be about one form and two forms, and uh, the differential form essentially. So uh, let's let's review what we learned. We say, well, uh, you have a manifold which these manifold can be a surface or volume or whatever you want to define. And these are the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the point in space, or when I say space is, uh, I mean uh, any, any physical or unphysical space or mathematical space, which can be uh, uh, represented by QI and the QI, they were contravariant uh, parameters that we had it. And we want to go from the point of A to the point of B on this curvilinear space or a general uh, space uh, that we have it for the QI. And of course, we know later on that um, uh, in addition to the QI, what you need is a GIJ, which is the metric, how the metric are forms in this space. And we say that, well, uh, there are many different ways that someone can move from the point of A to point of B. So uh, one way is, for example, uh, going from these paths. The other way will be going from these paths or going from another path like this. And we say that which one uh, uh, is the shortest uh, and uh, we call one of them to be the shortest one. And when we say shortest means not necessarily the physical one, right? I mean, uh, not in terms of the distance, it can be in traction, for example. Uh, 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 it, it can be in terms of time. It, it really depends on the way that you want to represent it. Well, uh, one way we know, well, is, is in terms of physical moving, I mean, the distance. And uh, this distance, I will call it uh, uh, DL which essentially shows the element on this specific direction. And we said, well, if you integrate it from the point of A to the point of B, that will be the total length. And this total length essentially, it depends on which path we are going, uh, uh, we, we, are, we, we, are, we are moving on, okay? 
And we say among the past that is the shortest one, then the derivative with respect to specific parameters that we have it there, it should be equal to zero, which means that for the shortest pass, for the shortest pass, again, I will put the pass in a code. Uh, this delta of integral of dl from the point of A to point of B should be equal to zero. And that was essentially the definition of derivative. And we say that that's really the derivative that people, they look for. I mean, you have a function and you want to understand when this function will be minimized or extreme, then you have to take the derivative and equal it to zero, and then you will find a point. And here is the same scenario. You have it for a general pass, and then you want to find out which pass gives you the minimum length, and then uh, 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 what you will do, you will take the derivative and you make it equal to zero and you will find the shortest path there, okay? So, and we say, well, on this specific manifold, what is the DL? Well, of course, DL is given by the, the length. So DL square is given by dr the dr. And of course, I know what is the dr. dr is now function of the parameters that I have, which is qi, then that means that is a derivative of r with respect to qi uh, dot dqi, okay? And we use the, uh, the Einstein notation, which means that uh, there is a summation over the dummy index. So if I want to write it down, that will be derivative of i of r uh, dqi. So it means that there is a summation, which I don't write it, just to recall is R over I, which means that is over the dummy index of I. Good. Well, lovely. And then we say, okay, DL square is equal to DR dot DR, which means that is equal to derivative of R with respect to QI, DQI, that's the first DR dot product of the derivative of R with respect to QJ, not necessarily these two, they have the same index because if we write it the same index, only the diagonal term appears and not a diagonal term, and that will be dqj. And then uh, from this, you will get the derivative of r with respect to qi, the derivative of r with respect to qj, and then we have uh, dqi, dqj. Lovely. And we, we, if you recall, that was uh, uh, indeed epsilon uh, i, and that one was epsilon j, uh, the, uh, the covariant uh, vectors, essentially, that we had, uh, the covariant component of the vectors. And then this was epsilon i, that epsilon j, dqi, dqj, which indeed, that was the definition of the metric gij. G I J D Q I D Q J, which is the covariant metric of the space that we have. Good. So, uh, well, we we had this calculation, and remember what we are looking for. Indeed, we are looking to find out what are these paths. How can, can we find the integral of dl, uh, the delta of these to be equal to zero, okay? So indeed, uh, uh, what we, met, we did the calculation was dl squared, dl squared, which is equal to gij dqi dqj. Well, uh, we, I'm looking for the DL. What I have to do, I can take the derivative of these. So I have to do the calculation of D, delta of DL uh, square. So means that that will be the, uh, the, the variation in DL, DL square. So the variation in DL square will be two. It look like the derivative. If you take the derivative, it will be two D dl dl so it will be two of uh, delta of dl dl 
and that will be equal to two of uh, delta of dl dl. Okay. So indeed, now, uh, uh, if I want to calculate what is going with the delta of dl, that it will be equal to one divided by two of one divided by dl. What I'm doing, I'm calculating this of delta of uh, dl square. Okay, so far so good. Any question? Good. So that will be one divided by two dl. And now instead of dl square, what I do, I will replace the gij dqi dqj. So it will be g uh, g i j oh sorry delta of g i j d q i d q j so this is the three functions essentially which is the metric the q i d q j and then i have to take the derivative of each of them so indeed the result of this will be one divided by two d l and then what I have, I have a, a delta of gij. That's the first term. The second term will be uh, gij delta of dqi dqj. And the last term will be gij delta of, uh, sorry, uh, dqi delta of dqj. Okay. Remember, the summation is all index of i and j. This is the way that you do, uh, you do the summation. Okay. Good, so far so good. So uh, now, I have to do, uh, do the calculation for the delta of gij. I have to do the mathematics for the delta of uh, dqi and delta of dqj. So those are the important parts that I have to do the mathematics and I have to find the calculation. We have to go step by step and resolving this. So let's rewrite it. So what we have achieved so far is the goal is finding delta of integral of dl from the point A to point B should be equal to zero. And what I find that is the delta of DL is equal to uh, one divided by two. I have a DL here. I will bring it inside of in, in the dominator of this. I, I will add another DL here. And then I will write it in this form. So I will write it as the delta of gij dqi dl dqj dl. So I have one dl from here. I have to multiply everything by another dl. Do you agree? If yes, can you, I want to just see your reaction. Okay, plus, good, okay, perfect. And then I have the second term, which is plus gij. The second term uh, that will be uh, d, DL of delta of QI, DQJ, DL, and the last thing will be GIJ, DQI, DL, D, DL of delta of QJ. Okay? So if you multiply the DL, you will see that you will get exactly what we had it previously. Note the metric here, this metric 
is a function of gij indeed is a function of the q but since i have already used the index of i and j i will use the index of k just to show that the metric is indeed uh, a function of the uh, contravariant parameters of the QK, which is defining the, the manifold or uh, the space that I, uh, we are dealing with. So if you take the derivative of, I'm looking at the first term, derivative of uh, GIJ, then I know that I have to look at the derivative of GIJ, which is a function of QK, then that will be the result of this will be derivative of gij with respect to the parameter of the qk then you have uh, the delta of uh, 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 um, the qk okay exactly look like the d so I, if you if you just write it as a d of uh, qij the gij that will be the result of this as a d of the qi Good. Perfect. So, um, and if you remember, when we use the Christoffel notation, usually I write this as the derivative with respect to K of G I J. And then I have a delta of Q K. Remember, here is the summation in this explicit in that one is the summation over K index. If you replace this inside of the first term, then it will be the summation or i, j, and k, all three together. So the delta of the delta of dl will be now one divided by two. And then I have the derivative of g i j. And then I have a DQI, DL, DQJ, DL, delta of QK. What I'm doing right now, I'm writing the, uh, the, uh, the va variation in the past in terms of the variation in the parameters that I, 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 we work together. Okay. And then the same scenario happens with, uh, with the second term, which is the GIJ again. And now I have a DDL of delta of QI. And then I have a DQJ DL. Then I have the GIJ DQI DL, DDL of the delta of QJ. DL. Wonderful. So far, so good. There is one single problem, which means that here uh, I, I have explicitly the result that I am looking for. I have a DQ, but here what I have, I have the derivative of the DQ with respect to L. And here the same scenario. What I have to do, I have to make it, uh, 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 make the integral on the and the second part, so, and then in order to do this, I have to replace it inside of the integral and I have to do the by part. So, and uh, indeed, I will go with the integral of uh, DL from the point of A to the point of B. Then I will replace the, the integral that I have. So it will be one divided by two of integral of, uh, derivative of k of g i j d q i d q j it's sorry d l d q j d l i have the delta of q k the second term will be plus g i j d d l d q j d l plus g i j DQI, DL, DDL, and then I have the DL. Here I have the delta of QI. Here I have the delta of QJ. Good. 
So on the second term and the third term, uh, I will do the by part, but let's do first with the, with the second term. So consider only the second term that I have here. So assume the second term. Later on, I have to replace it here, which is integral of g i j. There is a coefficient of one divided by two, which I will keep it at the end. So uh, I'm not worried about that. So, uh, and uh, I have uh, d dl of delta of q i d q j dl and then all of these is multiplied by dl okay so if you simplify this that will be integral of gij uh, dqj dl then i have the d of delta of q i because the DL, with this DL, they will simplify and they will give you the full, full, full one. So if I want to write it as a bipart, that will be look like DU, and that part will be look like V. So indeed, we know that uh, integral of V DU will be inter, uh, equal to v u minus integral of uh, of of uh, d v u that's a that's a bipart rule so uh, uh, if that someone doesn't know just let me know i will prove that yes is integration by part uh is there anyone that doesn't know how to do these uh, calculation? Is is a simple derivative? Okay. So if you all, uh, uh, if you have any problem, let me know. I will prove it to you. Else, uh, I, I assume that you know these. Okay. It just raised, raised hand, so I don't know. Is there any question, guys? Uh, the panelist. No. Okay. So using this formula, what I will do is proving that so it will be integral or it will be equal to u. V, so it will be GIJ, DQJ, DL, multiplied by U, which is the delta of QJ, okay, minus integral of DV, DV, which will be equal to D of GIJ, DQJ, DL multiply by u, which is delta of qi. In the same way, we can prove that, uh, and by the way, that is starting from the point a to the point b, point a to the point b. So it means that that will be point a to the point B, and if you look at this term, explicitly that one, uh, on the point A, uh, point B, uh, the dqj, uh, the, the delta of qj will be equal to zero because that's a fixed point, and the point A, also the delta of qj will be equal to zero. So indeed, the total term here will be equal to zero. So the entire the results of this integral will be equal to minus integral of d of g i j uh, d q j d l delta of q i. Okay. 
And if you do it for the third term, which is this one, the only difference will be just swapping i and j. So for the third integral, the result will be the same for the third integral, will be equal to minus integral of d of g i j d q i the d l delta of q j. That will be the only difference. So substituting these in, uh, into the integral, we will get the delta of integral of from the point A to point B, which later on we have to make it equal to zero, is one divided by two of integral of derivative of K of G I J, D Q I D L, D Q J D L, then I have the delta of Q K. That's one term which the summation is over uh, i, j, and k, okay? Then I have the second term, which now the second term by using the by part becomes minus. So it becomes minus. Then I have the integral, which the integral is written, uh, but is d, dl, because the integral is or l, so I have to divide it by dl of the g, i, j, dqj dl delta of qj. Remember, that's a second term by itself. So the summation is a different summation on i and j, okay? And the last one will be minus ddl of gij dqi dl and then what you have you have the delta of q i and every bracket is closed and then i have the dl remember that dl was the reason that i in the denominator i had the dl here because by using the by part what i got i got this expression okay so maybe if you want, if you don't want to get confused, maybe I have to write it as a minus integral of d d l of g i j d q i j divided by d l delta of q i d l, and the same for this one d d l g i j d q i d l delta of q j. Yeah. Good. Any question? Perfect. If there is no question, let's go and move on to simplify these. I further. think there. I think professor. I think there is a question. Okay. Um. Um. Ahmed uh, Issa ask. Uh, we can get it by delta u v equal to delta u dot v plus v delta u, then do integration from both sides. Yes, yes. Yes, this is exactly the the result that uh, the by part. Uh, that relates to this question. That one. And... Okay. Uh, he asked another question, what are going to get by uh, this calculation? The, the, uh, the closest state. Path. Yeah, yeah. You will get an equation, which is what we call it, uh, the equation of motion. Okay? Okay, okay good. So, um, well, so far so good. Uh, still, I have to. We have to work on the second term and the third term because they they require a little bit of uh, calculation. Or oh, I can I can just uh, keep keep it like this. So remember the first term. On the first term, the summation is or i, j, and k. There are three different indices. Okay, not not a problem. The second term is another term which the summation is over i and j. 
Okay, they are free indices, they are dummy indices. Can I change J to be equal to K? Do you agree? Is a summation, right? And has nothing to do with the first term. Do you agree? I'm, I'm waiting for your reply. Yes. May some say yes. Isa say yes. So because it's a summation or these dummy index, dummy index will be uh, uh, will have no meaning at the end when you do the summation of work. Do you agree also the third term, the summation will be over i and j, and here I will do in a different way. What I will do, I will replace i with a k, and here i with a k. Remember, I care which index is the summation, okay? Uh, when I replace i, I have to replace I on the second term, all of them, okay? Good? Good, perfect. I think that in the indices there is something uh, here. It will be DQJI, that will be the first one will be I. Why no one say that? That will be I. The second term will be J, which is this one will be J. Okay. So what I have to do, let me see which one is which. Okay. On the first one, I will be replaced by K, which means that I will be replaced by K. And this, uh, the last one, J will be replaced by K. J will be replaced by K. Okay, perfect. Lovely. So, and then what I will get, I will get one divided by two of integral from the point A to the point B. Then curvy bracket of derivative of K of G I J, D Q I, D -Q D L, D Q J, dl and then i have a delta of qk minus d dl of gij uh, sorry gkj dqj dl then I have the delta of Q, K. The last term will be minus D, D, L of G, I, J, D, Q, I, D, L. And I have the delta of Q, K, D, L. Good. Can I factor the D uh, uh, delta Q? Okay. Now the indices are the same, so I have no problem. I can factor it out. And then I will write it as a one divided by two of integral from the point A to the point B. And then I have the G I J D Q I D L dqj dl minus uh, ddl i can i can uh, cast them together gkj dqj dl plus gij dqi dl and then finally what i have i have the delta of QK DL. So, and that should be, uh, that should be equal to, uh, uh, that should be equal to zero. Okay. So, which means that uh, for any arbitrary pass that we, be, because we are looking for, for a pass that gives us this possibility, that when you do the variation on the on the pass, that allows us to having this integral from the point A to pay in point B to be equal to zero. So it means that uh, in order to get such a general uh, result, 
means that the integrand should be equal to zero. So it means that that term that I, I highlighted with the green, that should be equal to zero. So it means that for the shortest path, one divided by two of derivative of k of g i j d q i d l d q j d l minus d d l of g k j d j q j d l plus g i uh, and th that one is a K, by the way. I have made the mistake. I K of D Q I D L should be equal to zero. Okay. Yes, exactly. Isa, you, you got it correct. The integrand should be equal to uh should be equal to uh zero lovely okay so uh well this is the e equation of motion essentially if you want to call it or equation for the shorter shortest path uh in uh for a, a general space which is determined by the contravariant parameters of the qi and also with the metric of gij. So uh, for example, if you give me a black hole, then if you want to find out what is going on with the light passing by the black hole, essentially you have to solve this, okay? And then you know the metric and then you know the entire of the solutions there, okay? Or when you have uh, an ant, let's say uh, uh, ant which is, uh, which is moving on a sphere, or moving on a saddle, if you want to find out what is going on with the shortest path, then you have to solve this. So, uh, nothing more than that. Let's simplify this because I want to get, get to you a very important notation, which we previously derived, and that was the uh, finding out what is going with the derivative of a vector. I will write it in a form that you will get, it, it will get a little bit familiar to you, okay? So, uh, well, um, usually we call these terms something like velocity, but I will put in a quote because here is the parameter QI, okay, which not necessarily has a length measure because if you remember in the Cartesian coordinate was X, Y, and Z, but in cylindrical coordinate was R, uh, theta, and, uh, and Z. And DL is the length, essentially, that we are doing the calculation. It can be even time. It's up to you. And then that will be look like what we call it the, uh, the generalized velocity, which is uh, the, the rate of the parameter that you have it, the co contravariant parameter that you have it with respect to the length. And this is what we call it the velocity. The second derivative also we call it acceleration. But... Again, I'm putting in a quote is it because it's, it's a general for a general formalism of that. Uh, and uh, that same also that will be velocity, the velocity component of I, the velocity component of the J. And then I have to look at the, the second term and simplifying a little bit more. What I have to do, I have to expand the derivative on onto the first term and second term. Okay. So let's do that. So it will be. Uh, the deriv derivative of the metric will be d g k j with respect to l. And remember, metric is not a function of l, but is a function of the parameters. Okay, and then will be d q j d l. That will be uh, the derivative of the metric multiplied by other one, and then will be plus g k r j uh, second derivative of q j. Uh, dl square okay i'm expanding the derivative there and then also i have to do the same for the second term then from this one i will get plus the derivative of metric with respect to l dqi 
dl plus g i k second derivative of this which will be d2 of q i dl squared which will be something like acceleration okay uh, again i'm putting as a code because it's not necessary function of the time good so well i have four terms in addition to the first term and i have to simplify them so let's simplify uh if you remember the metric is a function of this metric is a function of the q uh the q okay the contravariant parameters but here since i'm not using the i remember this this term is independent of this term is independent of this term so then i'm allowed to use the repeated indices so here i believe and i'm saying that g k j is a function of q but now the index that i have not used i will use i here okay so the derivative of g k j with respect to L will be the derivative of metric of Q, uh, KJ with respect to QI, the QI with respect to DL. That's the first term that I have. The second term that I have here, which is again the derivative of the metric, here I will say the metric of GIK because it's an independent term, is a function of the contravariant parameter of the Q, but the contravariant uh, contra parameter of the Q, now the index that I have not used in this term, I will call it with a J. Then let's take the derivative of that. So indeed will be DQ, DGJIK with respect to DL, will be equal to derivative of i k with respect to q k sorry q j d q j with respect to d l good uh let's see is that a kind of euler lagrange oh, yes exactly is a kind of euler lagrange equation uh, okay well now I simplified, let's do that. So it will be one divided by two. Then I have the derivative of K of G I J D Q I D L D Q J D L. That was the first term that I have not modified anything. So then the second term will be minus sign. I have parentheses. I have four terms there. So the first term will be this one, which will be derivative respect to I of G K J. Then I have D Q I D L multiplied by this term. Remember, I still have the other term, which is the D Q J D L. Then I have the second G K J second derivative of j dl squared now i have to go to the last term when i have to take the derivative so i have the first term for the last term and second term for the last term so that will be equal to plus the derivative with respect to j of g i k which is this term multiplied by d q j dl then the entire this has to be multiplied by dq i dl plus g i k second derivative of q i uh, square okay the entire of this should be equal to zero okay so this is identical to that one this is identical to the other two and i will put them together so what i will get i will get one divided by two 
of the first term will be k g i j minus i g k j minus j g i k d q i d l d q j d l okay and then i have the third term and the fifth term which will be plus uh, sorry my apologies minus one half of g k j d to q j d l square plus g i k d to q i d l square okay that is equal to zero remember that uh, this term is independent of that term so the dummy index of i can be identical or j can be identical so what i will do i will replace this with the i then i will replace this with the i so the, this will be two g uh because the metric is symmetric remember i k of d to q i d l squared so the two goes away with the other term and then if you multiply by a minus sign that will be g i k d to q i d l square uh papa, if i multiply by a minus sign that will be minus at the front of this will be plus uh, one half of uh derivative of i g k j derivative with respect to j of g i k minus derivative with respect to k of g i j of d q i d l d q j d l equal to zero okay okay no questions so far so um remember this is look like acceleration and this look like velocity when i say is a a, a, a is a general velocity or general acceleration if someone wants to define it okay but it seems that it gives us an equation of motion for uh, for the parameter of the qi which gives you the shortest pass depending on the metric that you do have it okay uh, now uh, um, uh, what I like to do is I would prefer that um, I will write something like M, uh, uh, like the force, if someone wants to look at it, or like, look like the Euler Lagrange equation. I want to take away this metric from this term, and I want to write it as a simple way. So in order to do so, I will multiply both sides by uh, G, um, let's say K, let's say n okay if you do that then you will have that term uh will be g i k g k n d to q i d l square and then of course is a summation over the k and the last term will be one divided by two g k n i g k j plus derivative of j g i k minus the derivative of k of g i k j d q i d l 
dqj dl equal to zero. Okay. So what is the summation of this? Is the summation over the k that will be uh, uh, the mix delta of uh, uh, i and n. And then means that the, the summation or i uh, means that the, the, any i will be replaced by n. So the equation of the motion will be simplified by d2 qn dl square plus one divided by two gkn i gkj plus j G I K minus K G I J D Q I D L D Q J D L equal to zero. What is this term? Anyone remembers this? I'm looking at the Q and A. Do you remember this, guys, from the previous lectures? Exactly. Is a Christoffel is a is a Christoffel uh, notation or symbol of the second kind? Okay. Symbol of the second kind which means that that is equal to gamma of n i j. So that will be equal to d to q n d l square plus gamma of i and j of d to, uh, sorry, q i d l dqj dl equal to zero. So this is the equation of motion in uh, any carry linear space uh, with any parameters that you want, okay? So the only important things that in order to find it is that you have to get the Christoffel uh, uh, symbol. And as soon as you know the Christoffel symbol, then everything will be simplified. Okay. Any questions so far? Uh, I think there's no any question so far. Okay. So, uh, well, uh, I, I recall that one of the, uh, I think it was Isa mentioned that while well, we can go with Euler Lagrange, and Euler Lagrange can be obtained exactly in the same way. So, uh, someone has to do with the variation and the variation there is the minimum interaction, right? So if you want to prove the Euler Lagrange from the beginning, but here the important point is that when you have a manifold, okay, or a general space, which is given by QI, then you know the metric GIJ, then you know what is happening with the Christopher uh, 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 symbol of n, i, and j. And then simply you'll have the equation of motion easily, even for the gravity, assuming that you are, uh, uh, you are closed by a black hole or in the Schwarzschild geometry or in the uh, uh, geometry or any geometry that you may have it, that's the equation of motion that you have. And essentially that tells you what is the what is the geodesy or geodesics on 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 this specific geometry. Uh, for example, let me give you a, a situation, for example, in the in a polar coordinate. Okay. In a polar coordinate, we have uh, in, in two-dimensional polar coordinates, we have uh, Q1 which is equal to R and Q2 is equal to theta, okay? So this is what we know, is R and theta. That's the angle of theta that we have. And now I'm asking you, 
what is happening with the equation of motion for this specific geometry that you are dealing with, okay? And the first thing that you have to do is that, well, you know the parameters, you, knew, in, you have to build up the metric, and the metric gij essentially will be given by one r square zero zero, and gij will be equal to one zero zero one divided by r square, okay? And from this, you can calculate what is going on with the Christopher notation. If I recall well, the Christopher notation for the one ij, you should have a two by two matrix, and then gamma of two ij, you have an, again another two by two matrices. matrices. Uh, the first one will be zero, zero, if I'm not mistaken. Oh gosh. Uh, one of them should be R square. And the other one should be zero, zero, one divided by R, one divided by R. Okay. If 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 I recall well, and essentially that should have been uh, the 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 result that I'm expecting for the Christopher uh, symbols in uh, in uh, in that specific uh, coordinate. Okay. Uh, Something, something is, is doesn't make sense. Okay, I think that should be minus r. And then you can you can replace it there, and you can get the equation of motion for uh, q one for the q two, and you will understand what is the minimum pass for this specific geometry. If you want to keep the length to uh, to be constant, I mean, if you want to keep the r to be equal to z, the constant, or if you want to have the theta to be equal to a constant, and you will you will get the the motion. Or essentially, uh, if you do the entire of the calculation, you will find that it will be straight line. Nothing surprising for this specific geometry because it's very trivial for us. But if you go with uh, uh, with some complicated geometry, then this result can be much more complicated. Okay, any questions so far? No? I think there is no any question, Professor. Okay, perfect. So now uh, we have finished the 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 missing lecture essentially that was the, the exactly the the part that the, we were not able to conclude during the past lecture and now what i will do during this uh, one hour that i have and also the next lecture i will introduce another way of uh, building up a space okay and this is absolute mathematics and when it comes to physics uh, it has application uh, in uh, in uh, uh, specifically speaking when it comes to the differential geometry. It has application, like for example, a Harnoff bomb effect when it comes to um, uh, doing the Berry phase or um, a Pancharatman Berry phase, or someone wants to do, uh, 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 let's say, uh, 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 direct calculation for the uh, for the monopole. Uh, the, uh, magnetic monopole, and uh, also it helps us to simplify some of the equations. And this lecture, I mean, today's lecture will be entirely on the introduction, okay? So I have to tell you completely a new topic. But remember, they are linked to each other. So it's if you remember, we started from a vector, right? A scalar vector, and then we went with a tensor, and we say, well, hold on. We can even make it generalized like uh, like the quariant and contravariant formalism. And then from that perspective, we could develop really, really every general pictures that we, we may have it in a in a non-flat geometry. Here it's it's something beyond this. Assuming that, and this topic is essentially known as a differential uh, uh, geometry or differential form, okay? differential forms how we uh, uh, we we define it and people also they know as uh, by the way um, 
they call it Glassman algebra. And even you can uh, you can say that uh, also, if I'm not mistaken, they call it uh, exterior as well. So uh, what we had as a uh, as a, a cross B is one specific example of this space is not generalized. If you remember, also I told you during that lecture, and also some of the uh, some of the people attendees, they ask also what is happening with, for example, Levi-Civita notation in a dimension higher than three. And I say to them, well, wait for it. We will introduce this formalism later on. Okay. So what is the differential form? Uh, like any any other type kind of mathematics, we have to go with, uh, with the specific definitions. Always we have to introduce the specific definition. Let's start with a simple, simple scenario. We assume that uh, everything is somehow understandable for us in terms of the three-dimensional picture. So assuming that we are working in the three-dimensional space of X, Y, and Z. And these three, they are the three parameters that we have, three parameters that we are dealing with. Okay, so far so good. So they can be real number essentially that we do. Later on, that also people they can uh, uh, they can they can extend it also to to complex if someone wants to. But I mean, for the simplicity, let's start with the three dimensional picture. Now associated to these three parameters of x, y, and z, we can have a differential form of dx, dy, and dz, okay? And these dx, dy, dz, of course, as we describe and we know from, from the calculus, they're infinitely small displacements or infinitely small or uh, the variation of variations in x, y, and z directions okay so essentially there are numbers that we are looking for so it, uh, for the first one from the x point of x0 to the point of x0 plus dx we call it the, these variation the small changes as dx but remember is not only a number but also it has a math it, it, it has some uh, mathematical feature so remember here after we will add some operations, operations, or we will add some new mathematical features to these derivatives, okay, is, is, is definition. So far, but we have to. But we have to first. Uh, first of all, we have to understand it in a in a proper proper way. So they have some mathematical um, um, things that we we should we had we had we haven't had in the past. But we have to introduce them, and we have to wait for for these kind of definitions. So, what are dealing with? Essentially, I'm dealing with let's say. Um, a new quantity that I call it omega. And this new quantity has, for example, A1, which is a function of X, Y, and Z in general. Uh, uh, DX, oh, let's go with AX plus AY, X, Y, Z, DZ plus a z x y and z d z okay so if you pay attention to this uh, this is the first uh, differential essentially that we are dealing with and this first differential usually has a meaning when you do the integration integration on the line 
okay? So essential integral of, uh, if you do integral of omega on the line, then has a meaning for us. Uh, uh, and then, of course, I can go with another um, form, which is omega of B. Um, um, I, I have to go with something as a different notation. I will call it for the time being B of X, Y, and Z. Then I will go with the DX, which product of DY plus C, X, Y, and Z, DX, which product of DZ, plus D, X, Y, and Z, D, Y, which product of D, Z. Just be patient. Maybe you will ask me what is, what is going on with this which product, what's that? I call the first one this, I will call it one form. I call the second one, the anything that has this formalism, I will call it two forms. Just to tell you, previously, you deal with these kind of things like a dx dy, dx dz, dy, dz. So what is this kind of integral, guys, when this object has a mathematical meaning? When you do the integration on a surface, on a surface, okay? So, and also we have another form, which this form can be written as uh, A, B, C, D, E of X, Y, and Z. And then you have a DX, DY, DZ. Well, this is in the past, we had DX, DY, DZ as, as the product, right? But now I am putting an edge uh, one, uh, a wedge one, just to tell you that there is some definitions that they have to care. And then I will introduce these kind of definitions later on. So uh, we call these, since it comes with the three orders, we call it the three, uh, sorry, we call it the three forms. Any questions? Uh, professor, I think there is two questions from Muhammad Isa. Uh, okay. Is there any differential function if so that W equal to DF? No, no. Remember that we say that it is defined based on the parameters of X, Y, and Z. Okay. If you remember here, we say that it should be given in terms of the parameters that we are dealing with. It can be given in terms of the Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So you have to parameterize your space in order to do these kind of calculations. Okay. Uh, what, okay. what is the second one? Second one, um, I don't get uh, from Mason, I don't get that sign between dx and dy uh, there is no oh, this oh well i will introduce that mason wait for it okay i call it wedge product okay exterior product and i will define it i have to tell you but what i want to say that if you have a dimension tree right i have to i'm dealing with the dimension tree i can have any any functions, any any omega, which can be either superposition of dx, dy, and dz, okay? Which, remember, the ax, ay, and az, they can be zero, okay? But I cannot get anything more than that. So it can be 
either dx or dy or dz, or you can write it in terms of dx multiplied by dy, dx multiplied by dz, dy multiplied by dz, okay? Or I can get dx, dy, dz, multiply all together. I will put, I, I just put a sign of veg like this symbol, just to tell you that I'm going something beyond only the multiplication of the infinity small. I'm defining some new rules, but I have not told you anything about these new rules. The first case, I will call it one form. The second one, I will call it two form because it has two uh, uh, infinity small parameters of dx, dy, d, y, dz, dx, uh, dz, okay? And this third one is only one option, which is uh, the dx, dy, dz. Remember, I don't have dx, dx, dx. I don't have dy, dy. I don't have any kind of, let's say, identical products. I don't have those kind of things. And I will tell you why I don't have these kind of things, okay? Is that clear? Okay, lovely. But still, we have to wait. It can be three forms of W to be like, look like uh, dx, dy, dz. They are identical. The two last terms, uh, Shania is saying that uh, W can be written as an ex of x, uh, as a function of x, y, and z, dx, dy, dz, ey which is a function of x, y, and z, dx, dy, dz. dx, dy, dz, they can be factored out, and the summation of e, x, x, y, and z, e, y, function of x and y, z, they're identical, they're all together, okay? That can be a general function of f of x, y, and z. This is what I have written like this one, okay? So in the three-dimensional, uh, space, which we, what we are dealing right now, which is the dimension three, which is given in terms of X, Y, and Z, okay? Either we have nothing in terms of uh, derivatives. For example, you take the derivatives and it will be a constant function. Let's say the function of F, X, and Y, and Z. Then I call this zero form. Or it can be a function of x, y, or function of x, z, or function of y, z. Remember, I don't write dx, dx, okay? Pay attention. Or it can be any combination of these. I will call it one form. It can be combination of D, uh, oh, sorry, my apologies. Uh, I've jumped a step. It can be uh, a, fun a, a function of DX. It can be a function of DY. It can be a function of DZ or any combination of that, which I call it one form because it contains only one derivative. It can contain two derivatives, dx, dy, dx, dz, dy, dz, and I call these two forms, or can contain dx, dy, dz, and I call these three forms. So in the dimension three, how many forms do I have? Zero form, one form, two forms, three forms. I have all of them together. And these are the zero, one, two, and three. They will be the complete uh, uh, forms in the dimension tree, okay? In order to have a complete one, you should have all of these four together, okay? And now I will tell you more what I mean by that. Is that clear, guys? 
ये सोलह Yes. Okay. Perfect. So now let's go with the symbol, which I call it veg. Okay. In Arabic is eight, right? Or in I don't know in uh, in Kurdish as well. I think we 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 have the number of eight is like that is written, or in Farsi as well. So uh, this is the number. Uh, this is what we call it the which is an operator, which I will tell you what I mean. This operator wedge has some property. For example, um, should I go with the properties or should I go with the definitions first? Okay, I can go with either. It doesn't matter. So. This which is anti-symmetric. What does it mean? Means that if I have dx which dy, this is equal to minus dy which dx. Okay, exactly. That's the reason that I don't write it as a dx dy okay because in the normal algebra that we learn normal calculus this is identical to dy dx uh, remember that in some textbooks they write it as a this way by the way they put a minus sign at the front of this but they know that when they write dx dy they have a definition that this the which product and the first is important the second also is important but uh, remember that is anti-Semitic. That's the first, first important concept that you have to pay attention to, okay? The second thing uh, which is important is that uh, is uh, uh, associative. So you can write it as dx. Um, should I write as a, yeah, I will write it as dx. dx dy dz that is also equal to dx dy dz, okay? You can swap each of those two. For example, I can swap the, the first two, then I will get the dx, which product of minus dz dy, and then I will get minus dx, which product dz, dy okay or you can swap these two together and then you will get minus minus which will be plus dz dx dy what you will get from these guys can you tell me Exactly, it's very similar to the cross product because it's a time dimension tree, but it can be generalized to any dimension, okay? So it's look like this, it's cyclic x, y, z. So if you go from x to y to z, if you go and keep the, the, the permutation positive, you can write it in a positive way. But when you break this, then uh, you will get a negative sign. Again, you can get it also from the Jacobi, exactly, you can get that. For example, look at the last term. I'm going from Z to X to Y, is the same cycle, is the same direction, is a positive sign. But look at the uh, this term, um, look at this one, is X and then I have Z and then I have Y, is a negative sign. So it seems that the same rule, which is being uh, 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 in a, a positive permutation also is very, very important. So uh, remember that not always we are dealing with this kind of scenario. Usually we have a coefficient at the front of this. What is happening with A, uh, uh, let's say dx, 
which product of B dy, okay? That can be written as AB dx, which product of dy. And the proof is very simple. So you can swap these two together. So that can be written as A dx, which product of B dy, then you can write it as A minus B dy, which product of dx, then that will be equal to minus A B dy, which product of dx, and then you can swap it, then you will get A B dx, which product of the dy. Okay, so the scalar functions, uh, the scalar quantities, uh, they will be out. And what I'm dealing, I'm dealing with X and Y in a specific fashion, okay? And the other things that you have to uh, also know is being associative and means that a, if you have A dx plus B dy, exterior product of the C dz, then that will be A C dx dz plus B C dy dz. Okay, it can be expanded this way. So far, so good. Any question? No questions? Okay. I think there is no any question, Professor. Thank you. So I'll be finishing in, in the next uh, five, 10 minutes. But remember that the, it, uh, uh, I didn't have the dx dx. Can you tell me what is the result of dx dx? Or the y dx dy? Well, why it is zero? Because that can be written as a minus. I can swap it, right? I can swap the two, these two together. It will be minus dx dx. So what happens? What is the two form that is identical to, uh, to its quantity minus its quantity, which is equal to zero, of course. So the result of these will be zero. The result of these will be zero. That's really important to remember that in the terms of the differential uh, forms, uh, uh, we don't have repeated uh, 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 differentials. So we don't have a dx, dx, uh, dx, uh, dy, dy, dx, dx, dx. So any two repeated indices or repeated uh, uh, forms will be equal to, to zero. Okay. Um, um, I, I can give you as an example that by yourself, you can do the calculation. I don't know, um, some few numbers. Uh, go with, uh, with your textbook. And when you look at the textbook, there are a few examples of how to do the, the product of uh, uh, um, a few, uh, few things. I can do one of the examples that is, is given in your book and I can do the calculation. So uh, one of the calculation that uh, they will ask, I, I will encourage you because it looks like new ma mathematics for you. You will be really surprised uh, the, by learning how this is important. So one of the things that, that in your book is given is that you have the product of the two one forms that one of them is three dx plus four dy Plus, uh, minus dz wedge of dx minus dy uh, plus 2 dz. So let's do the expansions. Uh, we just proved that the scalar quantity at the front of this or the, uh, uh, not the one form will not be important. So you can product them together. So the result of this will be 3 multiplied by 1 dx dx then you will get uh, plus, uh, sorry, minus three dx dy uh, plus six dx dz 
Then I have just simply writing that. Then I have four dy dx uh, minus four dy dy plus eight dy dz. And the last one will be minus dz dx and uh, da, 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 um, plus dz dy yes and the last term will be minus 2 dz dz so the this term will be equal to 0 this term will be equal to 0 this term will be equal to 0 because uh, the the one forms are repeated then the result of these we usually go in a positive cycle so uh, dx dy i will keep it dx dz i will keep it and, uh, dy dx it will be minus replaced by dx dy uh, that one i will keep it this one will be uh, dz dy will be replaced by dy dz with a negative sign. And that one also will be uh, will be changed to my uh, plus uh, minus uh, dx dz. So if you simplify all of them together, the result that you will get is, uh, is essentially um, ba, 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 is essentially will be given by seven. I'm just reading out from, from your book. Um, let's see, minus three here, dx dy, and here minus seven dx, dy and uh, then I have a 6 dx dz I have minus uh, and multiplied by minus will be plus 7 dx dz and finally I have uh, ba -ba minus dy dz and plus 8 that will be 7 plus 7 dy d z okay so you will see that now it has been simplified uh way further uh, that can be defined i mean uh the wedge product as we described it's not necessary uh, the signature of the three-dimensional space it can be defined also in the n-dimensional space so you can have q i which i can be um, can change from 0, 1, 2, until n, OK? Or d, let's call it d, because let's go with the d-dimensional space. Uh, and then I, associated to this, I can have a dqi, right? So which is uh, uh, the, the one form that we have, one forms in that specific space, specific space. For example, that can be dq1, that can be dq2, that can be dq3 until dqn or dqd. So that will be, all of them will be one form. Then I can have the product of these. So I can have a dq1, which product of the dq2 and dq1, which product of the dqd or maybe also dq2 which product of the DQ3 and etc. So the, these are the two forms. And the maximum forms that you will get is the D forms. And the D forms is essentially DQ1, which product of DQ2, which product of the DQ3, which product of until you will get DQD. So this is the D forms in that specific space. And before that, you have the T forms and etc. So also you have the zero form. So in the D-dimensional space, indeed, 
remember, it's not only about three-dimensional because the three-dimensional space was very easy for us. It was look like the, the cross product, but here now we are expanding to N dimension. And here, what you can do, you can see that we have N forms, D forms essentially. And the entire the space, which is associated to that one, it can start from zero form, one form, two forms, three forms, until the D forms. And these are all sets which they will provide you the complete space in the D-dimensional space, okay? For example, it can be, uh, I don't know, uh, in the Minkowski space, it can be uh, Q0, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So in Cartesian Minkowski space, that can be CT, one of them, it can be X, Y, and Z another, or it can be C, T, R, theta, and phi. That will be uh, the three-dimensional space and uh, the four-dimensional space. And then the metric that you have it, it will be different there. Okay? So it's very, very important to appreciate the completeness of this space. Okay? And when you know the completeness of this space, then you can expand it to, uh, to other scenarios. So for any uh, space like this, I mean, space uh, um, that we have it like, like that one also, from here, by the way, you can define also the levitch uh, notation for the n dimension, which means that if they are in the sequence in the, in, in the positive permutation, you will get a positive sign. If it's going with odd permutation, then you will get a negative sign. That's the way that people, they will introduce the, Levitivita annotation in a higher dimension. I think that was one of the questions that uh, the students, they, they asked during the course. Uh, however, uh, what I want to say that associated to any of these differential forms and differential space, there is another space that we call it the complementary or dual space, okay? If I want to say in a in a simple lay language in naive way, it look like the covariant formalism, contravariant formalism that we had, and we had the covariant formalism, and the product of these two they were giving you uh, the, the the scalar quantity, and here associated to any differential space we have a dual space which the dual space somehow completes the, the space that you are missing it, okay? Or is the conjugate of that. And the dual space is essentially shown with a star. Also, some people, they call it uh, um, uh, this, the star space, okay? Um, uh, so um, and I, I will tell you further how to build up this. So, um, If you recall in the three-dimensional space, we had the zero form, we had one form, we had two forms and three forms. If you have the zero form from the differential space, From the complementary or the dual space, the one that completes this is the three form and vice versa. So for example, if you have the three forms here, the, the complete one will be complementary, one will be the zero form. If you have one form here, The, uh, the complementary one will be the two forms. If you have a two form, the complementary will be one form. Such a way that the, 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 the sum of the two, they will give you the dimensionality that you are dealing with. So if you look at the sum of the two, that will be zero and, and, one, and three, that will be equal to three, or two and one will be equal to three, or one and two, they will be equal to three. So that's a way that we are building up the dual space. And there is an operator that people, they show it. And this operator, as I say, is shown with the, with the star operator. Okay. 
So for example, uh, if if I want to, uh, if, if I have a, a differential form of omega, the star of omega will show the dual space. Okay. Let's go with a few examples. So in the Cartesian coordinate, the three-dimensional space that we discussed, the three-dimensional space. So either you have, uh, let's say, one form, for example, one form of uh, the number one or two or three, because there is no differential one. And the star of one will be the three form. Remember that? And what is the three form? Is dx, dy, dz. Okay, that's a dual space. I'm writing here. Is that clear, guys? If you have dx, which is which is the one form, or if you have dy or dz, then uh, what is happening with the star of uh, of uh, uh, dx? That will be dy dz okay the same scenario if you go with the dy i don't want to write them all but if you go with the dy the star of dy will be dx uh, dz sorry sorry my apologies my apologies it has to be dy uh, sorry dz dx if you have a dz the star of dz will be equal to dx dy remember all of them they are this is the zero form this is the one form and then i have a two forms which the two forms that i have they are either dx dy or dy dz, or it is dx dz. So the star of dx dy, what will be the result, guys? Exactly, it will be dz. Pay attention to that one. Lovely. The star of dy dz will be, I'm looking at this, that will be equal to dx. The star of dx dz equal to dy. Lovely. And the three forms, we have another one, which is dx. dy, dz. What is the star of dx, dy, dz? Exactly, is equal to one, which is very, very important, okay? Usually people, when it goes to the two forms, three forms, usually they put parentheses here just to, to make it more uh, clear that what they mean is not the start of the first one and then the later on. So uh, uh, pay attention to the lecture and do a little bit of exercise. And the next lecture, I will go beyond these and uh, I, will introduce, uh, I will introduce some uh, nice mathematical formalism to tell you how to even, for example, write Maxwell equations in in a simple way so uh if you have any questions just let me know and next lecture will be uh on wednesday if i'm not mistaken that is that right uh, uh jamil yes it's right uh, we will present uh, last presentation at wednesday uh, in this time okay perfect i will stop the youtube one and uh, i'll